you've been following anything we've been doing lately, you've probably heard a lot about our LML tuning and how hard we're pushing the LMLs with all the emissions equipment intact. And today I'm going to show you our plan to take that whole strategy to the next level. We're at Whirly's Custom Fab Shop again, and this time my 2011 is under the knife. Got Jason here with me, just going to kind of show me, you guys have had the truck for a week, tinkering, building, custom fab this emissions equipped twin turbo kit. So fill me in, bud, where are we at? Yep, what we have going here is a emissions compliant twin turbo kit. So it will include the low pressure turbo mounted off to the passenger side like you would normally see them in a standard twin kit. The uh, major difference here is we're keeping the EGR system and all of the EGR functions intact. So we changed the rules a little bit on you. A little bit, it's a little bit different. It's been a uh, pretty interesting kit to build. It's had quite a bit more involved in uh, designing and making things fit because there's a lot less room under there with all the EGR system in place still. Yeah, yeah. We got the EGR system, we got the throttle blade, the grid heater. Yep. Makes, we're keeping both batteries Both up batteries are going to stay under the hood. There's no battery down in the frame. The urea tank is in place. The urea fill point is oh, in yeah, place. Got that too. <laughs> yes, got that in there. Um, all of the EGR valves, there's pretty much nothing touched on the EGR system at all. It, uh, it will be a much quicker install than your typical twin turbo kit because you're not dealing with removing... Can you say that one more time for me? be a much quicker install than my usual twin turbo kit? Yeah, because you're not removing all of the EGR system. I like the way that sounds. Yeah, install time should definitely be a little, a little uh, faster than normal. Nice, nice. So obviously this thing is a, would be a total nightmare to build on the truck, right? Yes. To aid you with the fab process, you've got yourself an LML motor on the test stand. Just yep, like you do we have a right? complete LML engine on the on a stand that we can walk around and have full accessibility around the whole motor. Makes okay. it a lot easier to build the parts and, that and has weld stuff. Obviously, all the emissions equipment. On yep, it still. it's got all the emissions bolted up onto it to uh, pretty much replicate a motor in a truck, and we have jigs to replicate the firewall and uh, towel and things like that. So, nice job finding a complete LML, by the way. I don't imagine that was particularly easy. No, they aren't exactly easy to come across like they are the older models. Yeah. You got it up on a dolly, you got... This thing's got a lot more uh, clearance points that, than I'm used to seeing on your other jigs. Yep, it's, it's full of stuff. It's got a lot of uh, little items here and there that you have to have in place to make sure you can clear all of the necessary things that is in the truck. And the, I would just, for the guys watching at home, I just... These engines do twist in the engine compartment, yep. so it's, you know... You see, you might see a hand clearance here, but you got to consider if that pipe's torquing. When the engine's a bit. torquing, you got to make sure you got the room that's not going to hit anything. Yeah, yeah. And this EGR system on this engine is quite a bit bigger even than the previous year trucks as well. I mean, it's almost yep. double in size. Yep. You can actually uh, just spin the stand here, and we can show that. You can see how a large EGR system is right here, and this is only the first cooler. There's a second one in the front. Okay. Where all the older model years only had one, so right. we just this deal. Exactly. We pretty much have no room on this side to bring up our conventional hot pipe okay. from the factory turbo to the new turbo. So we actually had to do reverse of what we would normally do when we keep the EGR intact. We had to come out the driver's side with the hot pipe, making it a two piece with a V van clamp. Yep. And then coming around here to the other turbo. Okay. Okay. So I noticed that instead of a one piece um Intermediate pipe like we're used to seeing you do have the two-piece pipe. Yep. I assume that's just we had to do the two-piece just for uh, ease of installation We got so many areas and it's so tight here with the cowl of the truck that you got to be able to yeah. Weasel this piece back here and if you got this long three-foot arm stay hanging out here You would never get it lined up to the turbo and so we had to be a, a nozzle issue here too. Yep. This is facing it's, down. Yep the, the the new LML exhaust housing has a, a bit of an angle backwards versus the other years were straight up and down Okay so we're still using a three-inch pipe yep. going up and around. This is this is a mock-up, obviously, so it's yep. not heat-wrapped, but it will be heat-wrapped. It will be heat-wrapped, yep. Um, cool. Coming in, this uh, exhaust housing looks a little different than we're yeah, used to Yeah, we're actually, with this setup, because we're not going to be, be pushing the eight, 900 horsepower mark with this um, emissions-compliant kit, uh, we went to a smaller turbine housing, a T4 versus the T6. We did this for uh, for room issues. It's a lot easier to, to house a T4 in here to package it in there versus a T6, and it gives you a little quicker spool up and a little more response, especially with the with the longer hot pipe that we have now. Cool. So I will tell you, we have made 850 on a twin with, with the T4s. Yep, I know uh, but, uh, the Cummins kits that we built for you. You had a T4 on that one, which which made some pretty incredible numbers. No, that'll be nice. That'll be really yep. slick. Yep. We can turn it back around here. Okay. 
and you can uh, get a shot of the cold pipe. Uh, this is the cold pipe, three and a half inch, feeding into the face of the factory turbo. It's a whole new piece from the factory charger to the new charger with a boot in the middle just for fitment issues and ease of installation. Cool. Um, so we did get rid of the factory plastic piece here and we relocated the PCV fitting that used to be in here and the PCV is now going to be located in front of the uh, new S475 just as it would on a, a factory setup. So we're talking emissions compliant, that doesn't just mean DEF, EGR... It's everything. <laughs> it's PCV, everything is PCV too. You're going to have your... Uh, your You're going to have your air filter uh, tester here to tell you when your air filter is dirty. Yep. Um, you'll have the PCV hose coming over here, feeding the face of the turbo, just like it should in a uh, factory single turbo application. Cool. Cool. Now, what do you think we're going to make for power on this guy? There's no reason the kid shouldn't push uh, 700 horse. I mean, you got plenty of air, and as long as we can supply the fuel, which uh, yeah, let's may... Yeah, tell the nice people at home about what we're doing there. Yeah, the fuel is uh, another side of the story there. As most people know, the factory CP4 is a bit limited on flow versus the uh, older yeah. CP3 like setups. We ended up in the mid-fives with yours? Yeah, about 560 is all, or no, 5, I forget what it was. 550, 560. 550, 560 um, with a uh, S475 twin kit with just a factory CP4 pump, whereas the older generation trucks, you were able to hit the 600 mark pretty easy. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to be doing here to uh, supply the fuel for uh, Nick's truck is a twin CP3 kit. Taking a CP3 and mounting it off to the side, just like you would on, a, on any uh, older truck with our bracket and, of course, our, our wheel, which will be belt-driven, just like the rest of the setup. So that'll be right here with the high-pressure line going to the factory fuel rail, and that'll supply the extra, uh, extra high-pressure fuel that we need to uh, make 700 horse. Cool. And you've already got the controllers done. We've yeah. done a couple trucks like that already. Yep. So. We've, uh, we've tested these kits a couple times now. We've uh, got a controller made, and the, they are working great. There's no need to have any tuning. You can slap that pump kit on a bone stock truck, and you've got nothing to worry about. Okay, so like the previous year Duramax, this kit's going to come with a coolant tank, and you got a nice bung in there for our coolant uh, level. Low. Yep, just like uh, previous year kits, they all include a new uh, sheet metal coolant tank mounted off to the side right here in the truck. And uh, we've added a, a low coolant bung, so you will have all the same factory features you would in a stock truck with the low coolant sensor. Cool, cool. And then I see now you got the downpipe um, you know, on the turbocharger here. We've got a three and a half inch downpipe because we have the smaller exhaust housing. Um, three and a half inch should be plenty for the power level that we're talking about, so I'm, I'm not concerned about that. Obviously, we got a tight fit, so there's a reason we went to that size downpipe. When this engine torques, we go in reverse, whatnot, we don't want downpipe rubbing on the firewall it's annoying and um, yeah so we're going to take that down and hook it up to the factory exhaust system with the DOC with the DPF and the SCR I mean this thing's going to be mean and clean and it's going to be quiet it's going to be stealth rocket I like it definitely going to be a sleeper <laughs> you got about a week and a half left here maybe yeah we got a couple days to finish all of our mock-up and uh, fab work and then it'll be going to the powder coaters whatever color Nick decides to have it coated and then uh, we'll be delivering it back up to him, and I'm sure you'll see it on the dyno. Classic gloss black, fella. Classic yep. gloss black. Um, I'm not going to be happy and get, unless I get 700 horse out of this thing. I think an emissions compliant 700 horsepower truck is exactly what GM should have built for the uh, Denali SS. But hey, what do I know? Um, we'll see in a few weeks with some results. Thanks for watching.